Hi, and welcome to Swedish Plant Guys, the channel where we try and help you take care of your plants at home. Now, today we're going to try and answer the question, what is good drainage? Because this is something we talk quite often about, but we never mention it. Most people know what drainage is, but what is good drainage? So that is what we're going to talk about today. Now, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do and hit that bell as well so you get a notification every time we put up something new. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps this channel a lot. And also follow us on Facebook and Instagram where you can get small sneak previews on upcoming videos. So what is good drainage? Well, the word drainage means the removal of water from an area with excess water. And the area we're talking about in our homes is, of course, our pots. If we have excess water in our pots, that needs to go away because otherwise we can get, get problems. But when we talk about good drainage, it basically comes down to a perfect balance. And that balance is between water and oxygen. So good drainage actually means a perfect balance of water and oxygen. I'll try and explain that because in your pot, if you add too much water, what will happen is that water will be everywhere in that pot and it will push out all of the oxygen. So the roots cannot breathe. Now, on the other hand of that spectrum, if you have extreme drainage in your pot, all of the water is just draining out. What happens is that you have too much oxygen around the roots and the roots stop functioning. So good drainage is that perfect balance in between those two spectrums. And how do we achieve that? Now, the easiest way to get drainage in your pot is of course by using holes in the bottom. These are usually called drainage holes as well. And what they do is that they will help you to get rid of the excess water in the pot because it will go out in the bottom by the use of gravity. However, this is not enough to get that perfect balance between water and oxygen to get that good drainage. And the reason is that I, what I have here is just normal soil, standard planting soil. And this is a mixture of uh, organic materials and inorganic materials. Like uh, we have a little bit of sand and clay and we have uh, peat and uh, coconut coir. It's a good, good mixture for the roots. They will survive very good in this. However, there is a disadvantage of this soil, and that is that it usually absorbs too much water. And why does it do that? Well, the reason is because all of this are really, really small grain sizes. And what happens is that water is a liquid and all liquids have something we call capillary action or capillary force. That means that water has the ability that every molecule can bind itself together with the other water molecules. That is called cohesion. But it also has the ability to bind itself to surfaces. That is called adhesion. And this force can be very, very strong. Actually so strong that it goes beyond gravity. So water has the ability to bind itself to your substrate, in this case, normal planting soil, so hard that gravity cannot pull it down. So even if you have holes in the bottom, you will not get rid of all of the water. Now that is of course also a positive thing because you need water for the roots. Plants love, love water, uh, but what they don't love is too much water. And if you have a soil that has very small grain sizes, now if we have our pot here, and of course we have holes in the bottom here, so the excess water can fall out. 
If we enhance this a little bit, we have a lot of small, small grain sizes packed together in our standard soil, like this. They are packed quite closely together, and when we add water to this, the water goes in around each particle, and it fills up all the spaces in between these particles. And that is the capillary action. It binds itself together with the water molecules, but it also binds itself to every surface. And what it does then is that it will take up almost all of these small spaces in between the particles. And when water does that, it actually pushes out all of the oxygen for the roots. So a soil like this can actually absorb too much water. So it's not enough that we have holes on the bottom to get that good drainage. We have to do something about that soil to get a better drainage. So you get that balance of water and oxygen for the roots at all times. And how do we do that? Well, the simplest way is just to add something to this mix that increases the grain sizes. Because what happens then, if we take another pot here, the same pot, we have the holes in the bottom, and we add some larger particles. What will happen now is that we will get a lot more spaces in between the particles. And what we're actually doing there is that we're breaking up that capillary action in the water. Because when we get larger areas where the water will try and be, the gravity will be stronger than the capillary action in the water. So water will start to fall down, all of the excess water will fall down and go out of the pot. So we will, in these areas, get air instead of water, because the water is not able to hold on to those bigger uh, rooms within the particles. So by adding something that has a bigger grain size, we're actually creating better drainage. Now you could just add something like granite or small gravel granite. That would work perfectly because you would achieve this. You would get those, that mix of larger particles together with the smaller particles and you will get better drainage or a good drainage. However, why stop there? Because you could also use a substrate that within itself has the ability to improve that balance between water and oxygen. Now the most commonly used uh, particle to help with good drainage is the Leica clay pebble. Now that is all around the world, it's easy to access, it's not that expensive and it works very good by increasing drainage in your soil. You mix up about 20 to 30 percent of your soil with clay pebbles or Leica pebbles. Uh, and what those Leica pebbles actually do is that those balls are not like granite, they're not solid. They have small holes and crannies inside of them. It is actually heated clay that has the ability to absorb a little bit of water, but also have a lot of air inside of each ball. So when you add that, you're actually adding more oxygen and also a little bit of water that is going to get absorbed by the bigger particle, the Leica clay, pebble. Uh, but you still have that mix of different grain sizes so that you get gravity to pull down the excess water. But you also have water inside and oxygen inside of that pebble. But the Leica clay pebble doesn't have the ability to hold much water. 
it actually dries out quite quickly. So if we have a plant that needs more water, but you still want that good drainage, you do not want to have too much water and too little air for the roots. Then you can use something else. And what we usually use is perlite, vermiculite, or pumice. Now these are substrates that has that amazing ability to hold water, hold oxygen, but still helping our soil to become more drained. So even if the access water here is draining out, each pumice stone or perlite stone or small perlite piece has the ability to absorb water and oxygen. So there we have that really, really good drainage. Now, which one should you use? Well, that is completely up to which plant you're going to be planting. If you have, for instance, a plant that needs a lot of water to survive, for, like for instance, a peace lily, it wants quite a lot of water. It doesn't want to dry out in between your waterings. It needs to be a little bit moist all the time. Then I would use uh, perlite, pumice, or perhaps even better, vermiculite. Because vermiculite actually absorbs more water than both pumice and perlite. But if you have a, a, a plant that wants to dry out a little bit more in between waterings, then I would use maybe laker clay pebbles or perlite or pumice. But I wouldn't use the vermiculite because that is like a sponge. It absorbs quite a lot of water. So which one you should use is actually up to which plant you are going to be planting in your pot. No matter if you are using leica, perlite, pumice or vermiculite in your mixture of, of your soil, try and use around 20 to 30 percent of that substrate together with eight, 70 to 80 percent of your normal standard planting soil. And we always try and recommend you to use a soil that you pay a little bit more because usually you get a little bit better soil for that money. So to summarize and some tips and tricks for you, don't buy the cheapest soil you can find. Add a little bit more and you will get more. When you get that soil, mix that up with 20 to 30 percent of some other form of substrate. And what type you use is completely dependent on what type of plant you're going to be using. Now in our all you need to know videos, we tell you if a plant needs to dry out in between waterings or if it wants to be a little bit moist all the time. So use the substrate that is good for that plant. Now, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do and hit that bell as well so you get a notification every time we put up something new. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps our channel a lot. And also follow us on Facebook and Instagram where you can get sneak previews every time we put up something new. And please, please share with your friends as well. Now, until next time, hi dog.